Okay, um, I'm sure most of us know someone or have uh, themselves bought a dog from a pet store or have ever like known someone who's bought them. I myself have, have a dog from a pet store. And um, we often don't really think about where these dogs come from before they actually got to the pet store. But actually, um, in an article by the Paws Organization, they state that 90% of dogs actually come from puppy mills. And puppy mills are defined as an establishment that breeds dogs for sale. And these puppy mills um, mass produce these dogs to be sold to pet stores and to be sold to consumers like us. And so essentially when we buy, when we purchase from these pet stores, we are supporting these puppy mills as well. And in an article by the Puppy Mill Project, it states that pet stores are the primary outlet for puppy mills and are essential for keeping them in business. So all of this information leads to my um, main claim that purchasing dogs from pet stores negatively affects the well-being of the dog population as a whole. And I'm going to support this with my three secondary claims, which state that one, purchasing dogs from pet stores funds these pup, pet, puppy mills, which leads to, which adds to the overpopulation of dogs in the U.S. Two, that puppy mills are inhumane and they mistreat dogs. And three, dogs that come from puppy mills come with multiple health problems. And so, to my first secondary claim that purchasing dogs from pet stores also adds to the problem of dog overpopulation. These dogs are um, mass produced by these puppy mills, and um, this leads to a surplus of dogs everywhere. In an uh, article by the Do Something organization, it states that an estimated 2.1 million dogs are bred by puppy mills every year. And that may not seem like that much, but if you know that 3.9 million dogs are in shelters each year, then you can see how we purchase these 2.1 million, do 2 .1 million do dogs when there are 3.9 in shelters. And um, when there are this many dogs in shelters leads to overpopulation of dogs, and it's actually stated that 1.2 million dogs are euthanized each year. And euthanization is defined as um, the intentional ending of a life via a drug administered by a professional. So because we are purchasing these dogs from these puppy mills, these, um, these dogs in these shelters don't really get a second chance. And in an article by the PAWS organization, it is stated that only 15% of people with pets in the U.S. adopted them from a shelter or rescue group, leaving many pets behind. So many of these um, dogs, these 3.9 million dogs are left in these shelters while we are purchasing these so-called desirable purebred dogs from these puppy stores. And um, it is also found that 35% of these dogs in these shelters are adopted, 31% are euthanized, and 26 are returned to their owners. So 31% of 3.19 million is a significant figure, so yeah. And my second, my second secondary claim is that these puppy mills are inhumane and mystery dogs. So there, there, there's about 10,000 puppy mills, unlicensed and licensed across the U.S. And most of these are found in southern states such as Kansas, Iowa, Arkansas, Oklahoma and such, but they also have to be shipped to the West Coast and the East Coast. And so in order to get here, they must be shipped. And it is found that by the PAWS organization that a breeding dog's cage only needs to be six inches larger than their, their body. So these dogs are shipped by the masses in these tiny cages, which hardly seems humane and for who knows how long um, over, to the, over to California. and. Um, when they reach, uh, you know, at the puppy mills themselves, um, the breeders keep the dogs in unsanitary and very small cages where they're kept together in um, unprotected uh, areas. And uh, in an article by the Animal Rescue um, Corporation, it states that in puppy mills, dogs are typically kept in small wire hutches inside sheds with no temperature control or outdoors with insufficient protection from harsh natural elements. So these dogs are kept by the masses outside with no protection, and they're they're sentient beings, and they're being treated as property. Um, they're being treated as products of of like of ways to make profit. And um, it is also stated by the Animal Rescue Corporation that hundreds, sometimes thousands of water per facility live in overcrowded and unsanitary cages without sufficient food, water, grooming, or veterinary care. So these dogs are being left out to the elements, and all their sole purpose to the breeder is to, um, is to produce these puppies to sell to us. And so um, it is actually 
These breeders keep these breeding dogs for their entire life in these cages for the sole purpose of the sole purpose of them is to breed. It is stated in an article by the Puppy Mill Project that it is actually legal for a breeder dog to spend her entire life in a wire cage. So these dogs are not being protected by the law and um, it is actually legal for these, um, these dogs to be kept their whole life and that's all they get to do. And so this is my third point. My third um, argument is that dogs that come from puppy mills often come with many health problems. And so when we buy these dogs from these pet stores, we're actually paying for like the title of just purebred or like this desirable breed. But often because of the lack of health care that these breeders are providing for them, we often get dogs that have um, health issues. Um, in an article by the American Society for Protection of Cruelty to Animals, it is stated that illness and disease are common in dogs from puppy mills. Because puppy mill operators often fail to apply proper husbandry practices that remove sick dogs from their breeding pools, puppies from puppy mills are prone to congenital and hereditary conditions. So these dogs are kept in these conditions, and the, the breeder dogs are much less in condition to breed these so-called purebred these purebred, we're paying for these, this high quality breed when we're just getting a dog that wasn't even in the best conditions, their parents weren't in the best conditions to have them in the first place. And um, when these, um, these breeders don't often pay for neuter or spade, so when these dogs are kept in log, large um, quantities together, they often breed together, and this leads to inbreeding. And inbreeding is defined as the breed from closely related people or animals, especially over many generations. So basically when a, uh, the mother, the siblings have babies together, or the mother has siblings with the sign or something like that. And so inbreeding actually leads to a lot of health issues itself. And um, it is stated by the International Society for Animals writes that rampant inbreeding and lack of concern for congenital defects or inherited disease result in an array of genetic problems. And some of these include uh, pneumonia, respiratory infections, hip, hip dysplasia, and chronic diarrhea. And so these dogs that we're getting aren't at their highest, um, like they're not as healthy as they could be. And so um, they're breeding these defective dogs that are like, they're being forced to breed and these dogs don't even have a fair shot when they come out. And so um, it is also stated by the, informa the vet information that the inbred dog has a weaker immune system than, that is less able to fight off these infections than that of a dog that has a wider range of genetic diversity. So inbreeding actually leads to a lower immune system, which means that these dogs, again, don't have uh, what they need to be able to fight off these diseases. And so um, based on my claims that um, these purchasing for dog stores leads to overpopulation. Um, these dogs come with many health problems and that um, these puppy mills mistreat dogs. Um, this leads to my main claim that um, when we purchase these dogs from pet stores, we're actually uh, leaving the dog, the dog population overall worse, worse than it was. <laughs> All right, I gotta go pretty quick. You've got a lot of information. It needs to be condensed. Uh, <laughs> you go over time for about two and a half minutes, so that's a little bit of a problem. There's good structure. I un understand what your claim is. I'm not sure how controversial some of the issues are. I do think the first point presupposes that uh, the puppies that are purchased in uh, pet stores account for uh, the puppies that are in, uh, you know, that are not adopted. I think that there are lots of reasons why dogs end up in shelters and don't get adopted. And, uh, you know, there's an assumption that there would be an automatic trade-off, and I'm not exactly sure that that's the case. Um, the uh, argument about the uh, puppy mills themselves, I do think that uh, there's a very broad generalization about puppy mills that needs to be you know, quantified to some degree. Uh, I don't doubt that there are lots of breeders out there who engage in the practices that you talk about that appear to be reprehensible and we're also dancing on the edge of a value argument on that particular point. But um, 
you know, you mentioned 10,000 uh, breeders across the Midwest or the South. You, you said the South, but I, I don't think Oklahoma and Kansas count as the South. So they probably be Midwest. Maybe Arkansas counts as the South. Uh, but the idea is that there are the, all these breeders out there. So is it 95% of them that are, behave in the way that you've described? Or is it 50% of them? Or what percentage of the dogs come from those sorts of things? I, I think that there's just this big assumption that there's automatically problems and I know that that's true in a lot of the places I just don't know that it's true of all of the places and whether or not there's any way to tell which places are which <laughs> because if we draw with the broad brush that you've got any animal that comes from a pet store automatically was abused when it was raised and I think that you would find that that's not necessarily the case but there are ways to maybe prove that. I'm not sure that you've done that. You've got a ton of data, like I said. I thought you did a nice job on that. You're rushing a little bit, and even though you're rushing, you, like I said, you do go over time, so we gotta be a little circumspect about that. All right, thank you.